This video topic was requested by my patron, Soggy Jane. If you would like to become a patron and have your video topic requests prioritized, link down below. And it can be really fun to develop, let's say, a bartender NPC alongside all of the player characters in the roleplay as it progresses. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about non-player characters, or NPCs. Non-player characters are any character not controlled by the player. As far as I know, this term comes from tabletop games where you have all of the non-player characters controlled by a dungeon master or a game master, and this is as opposed to player characters, which are all controlled by the other players sitting around the table. And traditionally, the players each control one character, which is their character, and the dungeon master or game master controls basically every other character in the game, which are the non-player characters. Typically, when we talk about NPCs, we are talking about NPCs that are not considered monsters, aka not considered characters that the players are intended to kill. Even though monsters are technically NPCs, when we say NPC, think of like the tavern owner or the quest giver or the random townspeople your character might encounter. Don't think of goblins in a dungeon. In text-based roleplay, a lot of times we don't even talk about or consider NPC characters in the interaction. So in this video, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the different types of NPCs and how you might use them as it applies to text-based roleplay. There are three types of NPCs in a text-based roleplay game, and depending on exactly how your game is structured, you might use one type or two types or all three. The first type of NPC is the admin-controlled NPC. These function exactly like NPCs do in tabletop games, where the player comes in and writes the post for their character, and then a specifically designated person, usually an admin or mod, but it doesn't have to be, comes in and writes for the NPC. For people used to a dungeon master player type of dynamic, this can work really well. It can be easily understood by players that they only have to worry about their character ever, and then specifically designated people or a specifically designated person has to worry about the NPCs. This gives the person running the roleplay a greater degree of control when it comes to the world around the characters. This can work really great for a more on-the-rails game, or a game where you have a lot of inexperienced players that are not generally going to take risks without a little nudge from somebody more experienced. You typically see these in group settings, but you might see them in a one-on-one -on -one roleplay setting. If it's a one-on-one -on -one roleplay, then the setup is going to be that one person is controlling their character and the other person is sort of GMing for that other person and controlling the world in the roleplay. These sorts of things should of course be worked out during the plotting phase before the roleplay starts. The second type of NPC is the player-controlled NPC. These are NPCs that are not explicitly controlled by the admin or the moderator of the game. And as I explain exactly how this works in text-based roleplay, for those of you guys that have done tabletop, you might realize that you have probably actually used this type of NPC in your game as well. When you give a character a backstory, you end up filling their history with a whole cast of characters. This might be parents, or an ex-lover, or an impactful teacher, or siblings, or children, or anything of that nature. And because no one lives in a bubble, even the sparsest backstories are going to have some other characters besides the player character. When an NPC is intrinsically linked to a player character like this, it is often in the game's best interest for that particular player to control that NPC. They know how that NPC functions in relation to their character, and therefore what their personality might be like. Of course, this isn't always the case. In tabletop games especially, there might be a reason that an admin or a mod needs to take control of that particular NPC. But if you're wanting to do this, I just recommend discussing it with that player first so that everyone is on the same page about who is controlling that NPC. 
In text-based roleplay circles, I found this often isn't even discussed. It is assumed that if a character is a part of your character's backstory, that you control that particular NPC. And even taking control of that other person's NPC can be seen as a form of light god modding. So again, in text-based circles, absolutely discuss it before taking control of another character's parent, child, sibling, whatever. In text-based roleplay, this is the default type of NPC, and this is definitely the type of NPC that you'll see in one-on-one -on -one roleplays. The third type of NPC is the free-for-all NPC. This is an NPC that can be controlled by anyone in the roleplay whenever they want, as needed. For example, if you're running a town roleplay, there's lots of citizens of that town that aren't going to be player characters that your characters are going to run into and interact with, and it can be really fun to develop, let's say, a bartender NPC alongside all of the player characters in the roleplay as it progresses. If you're running a narrative game where everyone basically has the same level of competency when it comes to character development and writing, having these free-for-all NPCs is a great way to have your players contribute to the world and develop it alongside the mods and admins. So if an NPC lives in the world and can be controlled by anyone, how do you ensure that they have a consistent personality and motivation and things like that that the player characters are going to have? The way to do this is with an application process. This does not need to be as detailed as a player character application. This just needs to be a short bio that players can submit, and then once that submission is approved, it gets added as part of your lore book. So then when a player needs a particular NPC in their thread, they can go there and say, ah, this NPC would work great. They read the short bio, they're on the same page as everyone else about that particular NPC before they write them. For one-on-one -on -one role plays, since the player-controlled NPC is typically the default, discuss with your partner if you want to implement a free-for-all NPC into the game. If it's not discussed, typically whoever introduced the NPC is the person that is responsible for controlling them. So if you introduce an NPC that you're expecting to be a free-for-all, make sure you talk about it with your partner because otherwise they're likely going to just assume that you control that NPC. So to recap, there are three types of NPCs. The first one is admin-controlled NPCs, the second one is player-controlled NPCs, and the third one is free-for-all NPCs. What type of NPC do you guys use in your roleplays? I typically use a mix of player-controlled and free-for-all NPCs because I am running narrative-based games with a lot of writers of basically the same level of competency, so that works really well for us. But I'm curious what systems you guys use. Let me know down below, and don't forget to make it a great day.